Welcome to Zero Tolerance. Uh, my name is Steve Michon, and um, I am going to be doing some lessons on EDM um, in our shop. And I'm going to cover three basic questions for today, just to make an introduction as to what EDM is, uh, why it's used, and how how it works. So let's start with what it is. Uh, basically, the the whole process is taking an electrode or trying to get a shape into steel or metal uh, that you can't do with normal milling, drilling, or CNC work. Um, for instance, I have a couple examples, um, which you can kind of see here. This is squares. These are just textures and different finishes you can get with the EDM. But if you notice, it's perfectly square corners, and that's something that you can't do um, with the machine, uh, CNC machine. Um, at least not very well without leaving some kind of radius in there. in there so the other things that we have done with EDM would be small details like this that are almost impossible if not impossible to do with conventional machining or CNC even five axis so what we do is we make an electrode with features like this and what we do at zero tolerance is we build plastic injection molds so most everything we do here is done with um, EDM in some way. This is a particular part um, that is made to hold some kind of wire harness on and most of the time we don't know what the plastic's for but this particular part has a very unique shape and it's a clip that pushes into a piece of sheet metal and holds some wires and we're going to talk about this shape right here and we're actually going to show how that's done in a block back there on the machine. Here. Right now we're getting ready to set up a block um, for just a demonstration to show you what EDM is and how it works. One of the first things I want to cover is the electrode holder itself. Um, I grew up in a shop where we had angle plates and we had ground blanks and we would put them in the corner like this and we would use clamps both ways or um, you'd have a special fixture with a B block and you'd hold the electrode as you can see we had a B block here. But we would hold them this way and then you'd have to square the blanks or buy them square. And I don't have many left because we've switched our, our process from angle plates and clamps to we use the Aroa and 3R system here. And those are the two most popular ones. I, it, if you can't afford the system, I recommend you figure out a way to do it. The, the, be, the, the best way to do it is to, to get the actual 3R and Aroa chucks, put them in your EDM machine. But there's some aftermarket uh, lower cost holders that you can buy. Sunspot is who we use, and they we've been using them for years. Extremely accurate and um, dependable and repeatable. Um, they work well on everything we burn um, in our size shop. We we can't beat them. But without those uh, holders and the and the fixturing. You're, 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 fighting, you're fighting a manual labor problem and, and accuracy. And I, I grew up doing it. If you're really good at it, by all means you can do it. But I really recommend doing them like this. 
for cutting, for burning, um, for just extracting electrodes in the design. All right, the next thing I want to explain is the reason for these holders, the Sunspot tooling, is we have a machine, a CNC dedicated just for cutting electrodes. We have a library of cutters in there. We don't change them unless it's something specific, maybe one or two different cutters, but we can cover 99% of what we cut with, with an array of 16 different cutters. And they're diamond coated cutters. Um, some of them are not diamond coated, but the majority of them are. And this kind of setup speeds up the process for cutting them in accuracy and repeatability like 10 times compared to the way I learned uh, with V blocks and, and angle plates. So this is a highly recommended setup. Um, even if it's just one station, you're still better off with this system than, than anything I've used um, in the past manually. All right, in order to make the electrodes, it has to be designed um, how, how you're looking to put that feature into your block. Here's an existing electrode, the one that we have burning out there on the machine. Um, we designed it in Symmetron. And I'll give you an idea what this block looks like before we, before we start. This is what we're trying to, to make. As you can see, there's a lot of square features in this particular job, but this is the area that we're trying to burn. So, and when I say burn, that means uh, spark erosion. So that's what the EDM means, electronically displacing metal. So the, the shop term is called burning it, even though it's technically not burning it, it's just sparking away the metal. So here's what, what we're looking to achieve and the first electrode we have going in there looks like this. I can give you an idea. I'm just gonna try to do one, one electrode at a time here. There is five electrodes that were made to make the shapes that are going in here. And I'm gonna try to show you what this looks like on the screen before we do it in steel. This kind of shows us, so we, we have the bottom clear on our CAD model just so we can make sure that we have the correct features that we're looking to, to put into the, to the steel. That way we kind of have a good idea that we're not going to have a, an error or a mistake, which being in the shop, you know, that never happens. Nobody ever makes mistakes. So... At least if we do, we know we can kind of figure out what happened and, and why. But there's the electrode. I'm not gonna get too too deep into this just yet. Um, I still wanna just tell you, this is just an explanation of what we're doing um, and, and how it works as best as we can explain it. This process has gotten so much better over the years. I learned on a machine that was very old. It had vice strips and stuff clamped to knobs to try to make it. You can get electrocuted or zapped, and I have been zapped and looked around to see if anybody saw me. Most EDM machines will generate a series of voltage and amp combinations, both positive and negative, corresponding to the individual burning conditions that you're working with. Almost every EDM process has a custom set of combinations to help you get the results for the specific outcome you're after. If you want to know more about the technical aspects of EDM, I recommend looking on YouTube and the websites for the machines that you're interested in, in getting or using, or the ones you may have on your own shop.
started this burn about 17 minutes ago. Uh, it's got very small details, as you can see. And it's gone about 200 thousandths deep on this, this end here. And it's just getting into this cool little shape, which is roughly about 20 thousandths uh, thick in the thin sections. And we will continue burning and we'll come back and see it as it, when it's done. Okay, I'm going to give you just a simple explanation of how this EDM process works. This is our, our workpiece. And what it is going to do is there's going to be a spark that is generated from positive to negative between the electrode, which is carbon or graphite. Um, we'll just say carbon graphite. And it will generate a spark between the two. And this piece of steel and the carbon I said I wasn't gonna get wasn't gonna get technical but they technically don't touch the spark gap I'm gonna talk about it quite a bit so I want to cover what I'm talking about we'll call it overburn is how far away the electrode is gonna be from the steel based on voltages and finishes that we're after so the overburn typically um, what I grew up doing is like a two thousandths per side overburn. And it ends up where you make your electrode four thousandths overall in this dimension, smaller than the actual dimension you're looking to put in the steel. So newer machines that have sinker capability and orbiting uh, combinations, you can you can increase this overburn is as much as I've seen, you know, up to 50 thousands per side. Um, depends on what, what, how big the part is and how much voltage you can, you can run through the electrode. But overburn is one thing I want to talk about because we're going to have to explain how some of the overburn works and getting the features into the steel that you want. Cause you end up with something that happens in the corners at the bottom that I will explain in the future. And there's ways to make that exactly how you want it to be. Um, if not very tiny error in there. So that is my simple explanation. Also, this is a hardened S7 block of steel, which is 4850 Rockwell, 52 Rockwell. So typically putting tiny cutters on to hardened blocks of steel is really hard to do. Um, unless you have the right machines and a lot of RPM. So this is another way to do that without um, the risk of breaking cutters. I do want to mention that I've learned a lot from a lot of good tool makers in the industry and I always want to recognize um, the help that they gave me as we have gone up in, as I've grown up in the trade. So. Uh, somebody has taught you something in the past, and I always recommend that you thank them and continue growing to uh, honor their input into your life. Alright, this brings us to the end of our intro to EDM. Uh, tune in next month and we're going to cover wire EDM and fast full EDM. Uh, I do want to get into the process of, yeah, I'm not going to get into the technical side of how the EDM works, but I'm going to get into the practical side. Cut. <laughs>